Welcome everyone, I'm Matheus Zeredo Torres from the UFF Computer Science Institute. Today we have a presentation regarding model checking against system components or any type of abstraction that requires coordination and interaction between smaller system parts. More precisely, this ongoing work proposes an intermediate language to aid the model checking on that kind of system by allowing a generic specification of data streams for a model on the graphical language Rio, which is prominent for modeling interaction between systems. Rio is a graphical modeling language that provides a simple yet powerful basic formalism for component-based system specification. By that I mean that Rio implements in the, their most basic semantic several properties used by distributed systems, like synchronous and asynchronous message passing, remote function calls, location transparency, and so on. In that sense, coordination models like Rio are fundamental tools for reducing the modeling complexity and uncovering design flaws for complex systems, since the higher level formalisms are usually more welcoming to system designers without prior knowledge in formal methods. Rio models express behavior of connection within instances by reasoning about how the data flow through them, where that connection is composed of primitive communication mediums called channels, where those channels are end-to-end -end connections between nodes that have unique ports, identifiers, and channel ends of data input or output, and those nodes are connected on a net that follows an established communication rule for correct system execution. Here's a little graphical example of connections used in Rio. Those are the canonical connectors provided by the language with predefined behavior, usually sufficient to implement rather complex coordination models. For the sake of the time, we won't attain into details of the FIFO and merger connectors, since later they will be useful in the presentation of the proposed language. As an example, we can connect the basic channels of the canonical connectors, forming a composition, in this case, a merger FIFO. The merger connector only accepts data from a node port at a time, rejecting all the data if that condition is not met. And the FIFO connector is an asynchronous channel with a buffer, in this case of capacity 1, that after some time we release the data as input for another node port. Considering the advantages of using Rio with its intuitive graphical notation and useful coordination properties, we still need to express formally the semantics of Rio for model checking. Constraints automata is a formalism used to describe the coordination behavior and data flow of system components. This automaton is used as a variation of the traditional finite automaton, where the transitions are labeled with pairs that consist of a system port and a logical predicate that represents any operational rule of a Rio connector. As it shows, a constraint automaton consists of a tuple of the following sets. Q, a set of states, names, a finite set of names mapped for each node port, a transition relation that's a subset of the Cartesian product between Q, power set of names, DC, and Q, where DC, that was mentioned before, denotes a symbolic representation of data constraints, being an evaluation of propositional formulae about the data that was assigned to any port of the system. Thus, a constraint automata is dependent of the data constraints, as it's used to apply its transitions and establish connector behavior. But the evaluation of any data constraint is related to time, to represent the changing nature of the data flow on the ports. Following that idea, a formalism called time that strings, also known as TDS languages, uses to express that notion. TDS is defined as a pair of string functions alpha and a, each denotes, respectively, the possible data in the system and the time, where a string is defined as infinite sequence of numbers mapped to a given A set. Thus, alpha contains any data mapped by an identifier, d1, d2, to di, and A represents the time flow, always greater or equal to zero. But we still need to associate that time relation to a port, that way modeling on input in real, thus a new tuple TDS names is introduced, where each element of TDS names is a mapping of all possible TDSs to a port. That way, we can finally express the rule associated with the real connector. For example, the TDS language that represents the FIFO connector is given by two TDSs and a rule that the date of B is equal to date of A in a future time. Next, MV is a symbolic model checker for finite state fair transition systems. This model checker was chosen for possessing an array of useful features, like fairness and liveness check, modularization, definition of symbolic sets and enums, 
possibilities of verification or specification of properties interactively. That way, you can visualize by trial and error the current design of your model. As another example, we have a model of an OxyMV model. Our models need a main model that to specify variables, other models, and define the initial and next states of those. After that, we can define uh, properties to be verified. In this case, we use a computation tree logic expression that checks if the port A and the port B of a connector never tries to send data at the same time. Previously, a compiler, real to NuxMV, was developed by Daniel Toledo of the FrameLab, which translates a real model to a NuxMV equivalent, representing the final automata we saw in the last example, being equivalent to the merger free for connector. However, the data flow logic and dependencies between the real ports, as we know, specified by TDSs, is still weren't modeled by the compiler. Thus, the data flow needed to be specified manually in the ports model used by the automaton. If one wishes to do model checking and reasoning about specific scenario system execution. Thus, not only the expressivity was reduced, but also the system designer, the user, needs to know the peculiarities about new XMV, opposing the idea of high-level modeling. Whereas that, a new compiler for the TDS language is being implemented in C, allowing a generic specification of logical constraints that denotes the port behavior and dependency. The language, although possesses similarities with programming language, had scored designed the idea that the user does not necessarily need to create a program, even though it's possible to create limited ones. The language's key idea is to allow TDS specification by simple commands and directives, those being the time directive and the TDS directive. As we can see here in this first example, we have the first two time interactives, E time and F time, that define an observation interval of the model used on the global scope. That is like a main program of the language. Any commands used under this global scope will be converted by the compiler to a constraint equivalent on the main NuxMV model. As you can see here with the interval definition, the variables are just converted into simple data assignments, the time initialization, and an uh, incrementation loop over the time that is used if the user wishes to run another model scenario. For the same reason, every variable will be reset to its initial value after a model execution. We can also see over here the other time interactive, C time, that points to the current time of the execution, varying over the interval. We can also use it to skip to another time instance, creating what we call a temporal dependency. Consequently, any variable declaration will not hold until the time equals the skipped time instance, in this case, two as we can see by this constraint over here. Now onto the TDS directives. Using those, we can define what kind of data over time a TDS possesses. Any of those will be converted into constraints used by the port model, since they have a separated scope. We declare TDS with curly brace and a few basic constraints. The first simple way we can do that is by a data list mapped to time instance, creating then a A port on the port model with its initial value and the following ones on the list. Another way of specifying more complex behaviors is by a program, a function in this case, or a mathematical expression. The program is translated into logical constraints like this one here, that's equivalent to the if, else, and return of the data. Also, any parameter passed to the function or local variable created on it will pass it and create it to the parts model as well. The mathematical expression is converted in a similar manner, except for the fact that the data part always evaluates to an identical expression on the new XMV. As the last TDS directives, we have the ones that express dependencies between ports. For that reason, before we chose the merger free for as an example, since it possesses some similar peculiarities worth of exploring here. You can use either the linked keyword or this arrow notation over here to express that a TDS receives values from other TDS, where the C port will accept one input at a time following the basic input nature of the real node, like the merger connector, on its initial and next values. Moreover, we can also express port dependency with asynchronous natures, like the FIFO connector, by the delay directive or this other direct notation over here, creating a constraint that in other words make the C ports have to wait until the FIFO and the D ports are not busy. As final regards, we can talk about the next steps of this work. First, finish the implementation of the translation process, followed by the integration of the previous compiler, and with another project called ReExplore, a graphical interface for all those projects. All the improvements for the language usability and syntax are also planned, along with an interactive mode that, similar to, with the one used by the new XMV, allows the user to specify TDSs by trial and error. Thanks, everyone. 
Now I open to questions and comments, and those are the reference for this work.